Hello, everybody. I am coming on a little bit early. You see me looking around there. It's so funny watching this in delay, but I'm coming on a little bit early because I want to talk a little bit. All right, I had to mute myself on my computer. I um, am gonna talk a little bit about acrylic inks before I get started making my hitchhiker journal. And this is my first session in my new studio. I've been in the new house for the last two weeks, but I'm in the new studio today because my husband came in last night and I wanted to be able to stream without interrupting or disturbing him with the things that he needs to get done right now. So. I'm looking at my, at my, at my pasture in front of me and you can see my house behind me. Um, so this is just a really fun, uh, first day of the new studio, first day of the month. I love the first day of the month. And I love that we're starting a new medium this month. Uh, this month we're talking about inks in watch, learn, play. So, uh, I don't think we're going to get tired of inks. Like we got kind of tired of pastels. I heard that a lot. We're tired of pastels by the end of the month of August, but um, by the end of the month of September, I hope you're not tired of inks because these are some of my very, very favorite things to use. I love acrylic inks especially. And so I'm going to have to challenge myself to not just stick with acrylic inks, but try some alcohol inks, um, try some India inks. I will try as many inks as I can get my hands on. I know I've got a stash of them um, back in San Jose at the studio. So I brought a few up here with me to Oregon. I'll be here for another week, but for the remainder of the month, we're talking about inks. And tonight I'm going to do my hitchhiker journal with inks. Hi, Jana. So glad you're here. I don't know if my watch, learn, play lab is running at the studio in San Jose, but if it is, hello, everybody. Hi, Sue and Clarice and Sue's friend. I know at least the three of you guys are signed up. So hopefully you are watching along with us and, um, we're going to be working. Like I said, we're going to be working with acrylic inks. Uh, my two favorite colors, Marine blue and flame orange. So those are going to make an appearance today. And then um, I'm going to start with some oil pastels to act as a resist. So I just have cheapo Pentel oil pastels or some Faber Castell oil pastels, whatever you have. There's even some, dare I say, I don't have these in the, in the San Jose shop because I sell oil pastels, but this is good old Michael's brand oil pastels. Any oil pastels will work. Uh, China markers, wax crayons, anything that is going to uh, resist water or color. So oil pastels or wax crayons. And some things to make marks with. I like to drag things through the wet pools of ink and make marks with it. So I like using a bamboo skewer. I've got a number of brushes that I'm gonna be using. Um, of inks. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So excited for you to use inks. So excited for you to use inks this month with me, Jana. Um, other things that I'll drag through the ink. I'll also press things into it and make, um, some texture like repeating patterns. And so I have some old cardboard. This came in some, so many boxes in the last two weeks, this came packed in one of the boxes of something that I bought. And it makes a really cool repetitive pattern, but you can also use just the bottom of your ink bottle. Okay. So I think without any further ado, uh, actually I have seven minutes of ado to further so that I don't get started too quickly. Does anybody have any questions about ink that they wanna put in the chat? Um, I will talk a little bit about the, the factors of acrylic ink that I love the most about the Daler Rowney FW acrylic ink is that I feel like whatever they use as a dispersant in there, and I don't know if that's the right term or not, but what makes that ink move on the surface is my favorite. Um, there's something about when this ink hits water on the surface. So if you spritz your paper with water and you drop a little bit of this ink in, man, it just, it flies through the water in a, the most beautiful mesmerizing way. Um, I've tried Amsterdam 
acrylic inks. I've also tried, um, oh good, we get some shooting practice tonight. So hopefully that's not too distracting. Um, I've tried Liquitex acrylic inks. I've tried golden high flow acrylics. Um, those also act like an acrylic ink. And there's just something about the Daler Rowney um, FW acrylic inks that I, they're my favorite. So anyway, that is that. I didn't even eat up that much more time. Well, I'm gonna get started because you know what? If you're, if you're here, 98 degree Texas, ick, yeah, it was getting super hot here, Bren, a little bit earlier. And thus the tank top under the, the overalls because I had a shirt on, but it was too hot. Um, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna change my camera view. Let's see if I can do that from here. And let's see, here's my camera view. Share screen. And here we go. Now I cannot see your comments in the chat, but I'll maybe come back in a little bit and uh, get that going. But the way that I want to start, and first of all, if you're just new to joining me um, here, I am going to make my weekly hitchhiker journal, which is something that I live in like this. And I thought that I had brought my um, my current week up because, but I took notes in it today on a little field trip that I did with Barbara, um, and so it's still down in the still down in the house. I don't think I brought it up with me, um, but this ends up being the where I keep my weekly notes. Um, where I doodle just in downtime or when I'm brainstorming. Um, I will also uh, open it up sometimes and have extra pages on the inside. Um, and anything that this is my, my list, my to do's for every day. Okay. So that's what I do in my hitchhiker journal. And then after I'm done with the week, sometimes I'll just take this paper out and tear it out and use it as collage and other things, because it's just ephemeral. Ephemeral means it's not meant to last. It's not meant for any like long-term uh, saving for me in my intention. You can make it however you want, or you can use these for whatever you want. Um, they're really flexible little mini journals and um, a fun art form. So I'm gonna get started. I'm working on 11 by 14 mixed media paper. This is um, 98 pound. And I'll show you the journal, the pad that it comes out of. Looks like, oops, the cover's off of this one. Um, it's a spiral pad like so, and it's the Vision Mixed Media Pad by Strathmore. And the way I like working with acrylic inks best is if there's some resist down in the background first. And I especially love it if that resist is um, white and you can't really tell that there's going to be something resisting. And so I am using a white China marker, which I mentioned before you could do um, wax crayons or oil pastels. The white China marker works as a resist. You do wanna get it on nice and um, liberally because it does need to have that waxy part for it to actually resist. So China marker oil pastels. I mentioned that before. So I'll do some colors on here. Let's do some hot pink. I'm just going to do some little dots, little clusterings, because I know that I intend to write on this. I'm not going to go super heavy with the um, oil pastel marks because they're impossible to write over top of. I definitely don't want to do that. But when I'm doing this in like an art journal background or something like that, and then I'm not worried about maintaining area to write over top of, then I don't worry about it at all. I'm just making some little clusterings of this hot pink. I know because I've done this enough that this book will get folded going this direction and this direction. And um, each 
like there's going to be four across this way. And so if I'm making sure that I've got all the area covered, then I'm going to have a little bit of these dots on each of the pages. But again, you don't have to think about it that hard. And if you don't have a little bit on every page, it's okay. Ooh, this orange is bright, bright, bright. It's like glowing. It's cool. Okay, I cannot see you guys' comments. Let me switch back over to the screen because I don't need to see my hands. There we go. The picture looks good tonight. Yay. From Benicia, it's lovely with the cool breeze. Oh, I opened the windows up here. And it's choppy. Yeah, I see the choppiness. I'm sorry. I'll try to move really slowly, not make any fast move motions, but I fear that that's just simply the, the internet issue that we have here. So I am gonna come in and I'm gonna be really restrained with my ink because I know that a little bit goes a long, long ways. And I know that I can add more, but when I get too much on there, it, uh, you can't, yeah, you can't go backwards. So. I'm starting with a little ink and then misting is just plain water in a spray bottle. And that, my friends, is my favorite. Just watching that happen, that wicking out. That's the ooh ah factor right there. That is the gorgeousness. So I'm going to tilt it and let the ink drip. Let it run a little bit. I call this Etch-a-Sketch art. You know, Etch-a-Sketch has all 90 degree angles. I'm a big 90 degree angle girl. So I like to lift it and let it run. And then if you need a little more of it to move around, you can spritz it up with a little bit more water, but I find that it's really easy to overdo it with the water. So try to underdo it to begin with, and you can always add more, but again, too much on there and then you are kind of mopping up the excess. So usually blue and orange neutralize each other. So this is marine blue and this is flame orange. But my very favorite combo is marine blue and flame orange. And um, I'm gonna show you how these two, because the blue is so green, and you, you don't really see it here, but because the blue is so green and the orange is so yellow, when these two hues play together, they make a gorgeous, in my opinion, sort of neutralized army green. Not even neutralized, it's just a beautiful green. So I'm gonna let this, again, the rest of the blue move over and blend with that flame orange. I don't want to get it all dispersed because I do want to see um, some of the, oh, fiddlesticks. I did not bring my dryer up here. Definitely will take a little interlude while I run down to the house and get the dryer. I love watching this. This move. So I don't need the dryer quite yet because there's still a lot of manipulation on the surface that I'm going to do with, uh, with the inks, but I will want to get this dry before I fold it. So I am intentionally not, I, you know, that watching it go hoof is my favorite part. It's really tempting to fill it all up with that hoof, but if you restrain, you get to still see like these really gorgeous little edges. And I like to see it against the white because it gives me more opportunity to do things like this, where I can take something um, like the bottom of my bottle and make some more marks. Right? So if I lift that up and I drop it down in a couple more spots, I can have the subtractive, right? The pulling away here and the additive 
in other spots. So subtractive, pulling away, and the additive, adding back to. And then sometimes this has enough ink in it that I could spritz that as well. Because even the diluted ink is super concentrated. And I can let that, even the drips, if I spritz them with a little more water, they start to creep in and do this little capillary action thing going on. Um, so while this is still puddly, this is a really fun time to, again, I've got water soluble, but it's also a pencil. So then I just start doodling into this wet ink and making patterns inside these, this sort of informal grid or this organic grid that I made. Remember the Etch-a-Sketch art part? When I made that informal sort of organic grid, it gave me areas to do this and pull in and play with the ink. And I can even take the end of my pencil and turn it over and pick up some of the ink and restamp it. So I'm gonna play a little bit with that and I'm not gonna talk because when I, I find that I just don't feel as creative when I'm trying to talk my way through everything. So I'll be quiet for a little bit. I'm gonna turn my music on in my ears. If I do anything that I feel like I really need to explain what it is that I'm doing, I will talk again, but I kind of want to get back to that whole just playing with inks and paints on paper. So that's what I'm going to do. I like pulling it around with um, just a regular stick as well to not make more um, ink on the surface, but just more marks.
But sometimes if I don't have a dryer with me and I don't want to run down to the house and get the dryer, and I like what's going on here, this is not gonna erase it anywhere that it's dry, but you can take a roll of paper towels. This is a little Diane Reevesley technique that I picked up years ago, but a roll of paper towels over the top and pick up the excess ink. And you also deposit that design, that pattern from your, if you have pattern paper towels. I prefer the ones that don't, but this is what I had in house because I did not go shopping for paper towels. So that's what we have. And it's all good because we appreciate not having to be the only ones that shop. So I am loving the layer so far. It's definitely not dry enough to fold. And there's, ooh, there's puddles of ink on the back side, which is gonna actually be kind of fun because I do like to make these double-sided sometimes. So I think I will definitely have to get my dryer involved. So I'm gonna do a little intermission while I run down and grab my dryer. It'll take me, you guys time it, maybe two minutes. I should, I should actually count. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, this is one way to stay in the When I forget things in the house, I get to walk down a stair, a flight of stairs, and back up again and across the way. I'm gonna get a backside dry as well. I think I'm going to, um, I think I want a little more of this orange in it. I feel like it's a little light, <laughs> excuse me, on the orange for me. <clears throat> and this time I want to start with spritzing with water. I know I just dried my paper. That doesn't make any sense at all, but I want to um, start. I want to show you the difference. So when you start with spritzing the water with paper, and then you drop the ink into it. I mean, that's the magic, right? That's just one drop into the ink. And if I just let that kind of do its thing, like it'll go into the next little puddle. I just love this color, flame orange. It's so yellow, but man, when it hits that blue, it makes a gorgeous green. 
spritz a little more very carefully. Again, I don't want to flood it. I don't want to miss all of that fun capillary action, that little branching out. And if it looks like I missed that spot, we'll just add a little more, a little more water. And if you can get your, your sprayer to be like really droppy instead of misty, you get a different effect. So if you're getting a different effect, it's probably that we have different sprayer and uh, sprayer nozzles. And again, I know it doesn't make much sense that I dried it and then I'm coming back in again, but look at the different color variations that I'm getting in the, the greens and the oranges now that I'm coming back over it with the orange again. It's layering, so it, because it's, it stays trans, transparent. These colors will layer in their transparent colors. Just lifting and tilting again. I never get tired of that sort of layers of that happening. So let that air dry a little bit. I think that it's definitely seeping. No, it's not seeping through. The backside was wet from just stuff that was underneath, but it's not really seeping through. I'm of course loving where this is going, because this reminds me of all things I love about acrylic ink, just the really flowy, puddly backgrounds. They're just really fun to build on and to layer over top of and still maintain some of the parts that you can see. So while this is drying, again, I might come back in with this Stabilo Marksell pencil. This is the graphite. I have a little bit of yeah, I don't like that in there. Let's see what else do I have? Oh, watercolor crayon. So anything the water soluble where, where there's still areas that are wet, those are great. So a favorite is Neocolor 2. Those are the ones that are water soluble. Neocolor 2. Yep enough room here for myself. And I'm going to pick some colors again. I'm not going to go. I've got pink. I've got pink, blue, green, orange. Like there's a lot of colors already going on here. So I'm not going to pick something outside of this. Um, but into that wet into the damp areas, even the, the wet areas. This water soluble crayon is really nice because it activates on impact and makes a different mark than it does when it hits dry paper. So you can kind of experiment with that and see like what it looks like, both dry and wet. And then I'm looking for a color that looks like it would go with this sort of that marine blue color. 
This one is called, ooh, glasses. Glasses, please. This one is called greenish blue. Yeah, perfect. It's amazing to use glasses when you haven't been. Like, oh, I can actually see what I'm doing. That's helpful. It's kind of like me using the same brush like for an entire project just because I don't think to change it. I think it's a I think it's a processing thing. Okay, and now I've got this water soluble crayon that I'm flicking at the surface with my wet brush. So I've got some really nice concentrated darker dots. I'm just dipping my brush in water and more water, bigger dots, less water, smaller dots. I'm doing it into the puddle that was already wet. It's gonna disperse a little bit in the areas that it wasn't. I could also take and make marks with the brush afterwards because it's all it has all the color on it so just playing around again trying not to overdo it um, I don't necessarily want to cover up all the white space although that feels like the direction that I'm going <laughs> because I do like throughout the week to have some white space to fill in with pen work and things like that so I'm thinking ahead to that a little bit, but first, not only it's just a piece of paper, if you end up covering up more of it than you want to, use it for something else and start again. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. So even at this point, if you're like, yeah, I'm not loving it, start another one. It's you have permission. Like it's just a piece of paper. It's just ink. We'll always use this for something else. Um, Try it on a different type of paper. If you're not liking what, what your work is doing on the surface that you have, try it on watercolor paper or try it on um, something different, something completely different. We're gonna be talking about papers next month and the effects that the surface of the paper has on things and basically you know, what different papers are good for, what I like them for. Um, that will be next month, October, we'll be focused on paper, but this month we're talking about inks. Inks, inks. So again, I know that this is gonna be written over top of, so I'm not, trying not to get everything super dark with color. I don't mind writing over top of light colors. Oh, this is fun. There's some of that oil, the wax pastel up here that I forgot about. Um, so I don't mind writing over top of light colors. I just don't necessarily write over the really dark saturated colors. There's not a lot of those on here, so it should be fine. And usually I get super impatient about um, folding it and seeing it in the smaller parts because that's really my favorite part of this is the construction of it and then the working in the individual pages. I don't know. I like this. I like the spraying ink part too. I like all the parts. Don't make me pick my favorite part. So I think I'm thinking I like this. I think I'm going to get it dry. Check on the time. 6:23. We're doing good. I know I started a little bit early, so. If I finish a little bit early, that's because I can't stall any longer, but I'm gonna get this dry. Take a sip of my drink and I can check, that's what I'll do. I'll check comments while I am drying things. Does the rink active reactivate with water? That is a very good question. I, um, let's see, Bren was asking, does the ink reactivate with water? Now, normally Bren, it should not because it's acrylic ink and anything that's acrylic when it dries should, should maintain its acrylic properties. So when it's dry, it's not going to reactivate because it has the acrylic 
binder in it. Um, however, because I sprayed this with water, water breaks down that acrylic binder, that polymer medium gets broken down with water. And so sometimes the ink itself, the pigments aren't really trapped by that polymer layer that the acrylic part got broken down with water. And so you will have some lifting with it if you dilute it down a lot. Now, the way to fix that is actually spraying with airbrush medium. Airbrush medium is really thin and you can, I haven't tried it. I have not tried it. So just, this is hearsay, but they say that when you spray it with airbrush medium, then everything is permanent because airbrush medium is a polymer medium as well, um, or an acrylic medium as well. Uh, so hopefully that answered that question and then some. And hi, Barbara, loving the colors, yes. So Barbara and I had an amazing field trip today to the Aurora Architectural Salvage, which is about halfway between she and I. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this now, because again, I'm looking at the clock and I, and I know I wanna work on some individual pages. So um, to fold these, I start and fold them lengthwise like a hot dog. Make sure that my edges line up. That's super important with this because you're slightly off, especially after you've gotten the paper wet and it's gotten wrinkly and warpy. And then um, you're trying to fold it and line up edges. It's a little bit difficult, but it does matter. Usually I'm a good enough and close enough kind of girl, but this one does make a difference. And then I accordion fold these or the zigzag fold them, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's a technical term, technical paper folding term. I call it accordion fold where it's like this. Oops. Uh, it looks like an M or a W. Right, so that is the fold for it lengthwise. I'm gonna reverse all those folds because the color actually needs to be on the inside and in the, in the end for this book. We want the color on the inside of the pages, not on the back side. Um, and then the other fold that we do is in half, um, top to bottom, in half, top to bottom. And I want, again, matching up those edges take that extra second to do it. It's important for the way that the book lays and is nice and secure. So I am going to cut in this crease. This is the folded edge. And I'm just cutting through this top little bit here. Just this first segment. It's actually in the middle from the fold over to that first intersection. So from the fold in right on the crease. Um, and then, like I said before, the, the color needs to be on the inside. So it's accordion folded like so. Um, the color is when it's closed up is on the inside, that's the backside. And then I take it from the center and I open it up like so. And that is how I fold these. And then I kind of <clears throat> move it around and see which way, where does it want to lay? It does tend to have a, a, a way that it wants to lay best. And so I flip it around a couple of times to see, and it feels like this is the way it wants to lay best. Each of those pages. So somebody asked me before, um, once upon a time, do I have the, these folds, like the, the closed parts at the top or at the bottom? See how this is all open? I don't usually pay much attention to that. So pick away, whatever way works for you. Um, I'm doing it with the openings at the bottom today because just because. Or if I flipped it over this way, they'd all be at the top. It just depends on what I like as the front cover as to what ends up being the orientation of this. So, and I can change my mind too. And like I mentioned before, 
I do like to make them intentionally with these big, oh, these big uh, foldouts in the middle because it gives me extra real estate for the week just in case I, I find myself with the need for extra real estate on, the, on my list thing. So you see, this is so funny because this week I didn't do much on the pages at all, but I did all of my work on the inside. Anyway, for whatever reason, that's the way that worked out. Um, okay, so this is my outside. And I do, I have been um, gluing or securing one of these edges because I feel like to me, it makes the, the book feel like it sticks together better, lays better, that sort of thing. So I'm going to get a brand new glue stick. Oh, nothing like a brand new glue stick. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up. Hmm. I'm wondering if my, there we go. I'm just working on plastic now over top of my new um, cart, which is a plywood top. I think until it gets its first mar on the top, which then all bets are off. I'm just gonna be working on the wood. I'm gonna keep it like that covered. Um, okay, and then this is how I get the, um, the fold outs from the inside. I will cut this apart at the bottom. Sometimes it works out that way. Sometimes it works out that it needs to be something cut apart at the side, but this is gonna be, normally we don't cut these apart. We like them to stay so that they secure the book together. But now I have front and that, and then this pulls out and this pulls out. So that gives me all those extra, almost an entire one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's six extra panels, which is really cool. Is, this works because this is 98 pound mixed media paper. It's really sturdy. Um, it's not too heavy. It's not too thin. It's like this Goldilocks weight that I've found that works for this, that you can work on both sides really easily. It's not too, um, it's not too bulky, it's still easy to fold and so on. But now let's see, I've got a whole half hour left or almost a half hour left. Um, I'm going to do the days of the week. And what am I gonna do to get the days of the week on there this time? Okay, one of my favorite things about acrylic ink is the fact that it acts as a really good glaze um, because it's transparent. You can add, um, you can layer it and make it darker. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna hand draw in I'm gonna hand draw in the letters, let's see. Let's see if I can zoom in for you because I'm telling you this part, I really want to see up close. So let me see here, there we go. Let's see. What do we say this was September? Three. Let's see, how did I figure out threes are the best to do? Like, 
this. That's uh, kind of a still funky looking three, but okay. Three through, I think it's three through nine, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, three through nine. See how hard it is to write over top of that oil pastel? Not impossible, not impossible, but it is a challenge. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this box around September three through nine. And then I'm gonna backfill it and you can see what a beautiful glaze this makes. So I'm gonna take a little acrylic ink just on my, um, on the plastic here and come in with a wet brush. Now my ink pen here should be um, permanent and not bleed when it's dry, but the key is it's gotta be dry for that to work. So make sure that it's dry, wet brush. And then just like you would with watercolor where you'd come in and put another layer to make things a little bit darker. And you can do that with this acrylic ink. I always like to continue to add a lot of water and keep it flowing because wherever it dries on the paper, it'll dry with a hard edge, just like watercolor does. It's kind of cool that way. So I feel like the, um, the acrylic ink acts like the best parts of watercolor in my opinion. And it also, oops. Um, it also has the added benefit of being permanent when it's dry, not reactivating. Usually if I haven't thinned it down too much or thinned the binder, binder in the ink down too much, but it's, and it's such a beautiful color. I wish I could get this in larger containers. The largest they make it is in a, this one, one ounce. Which is very disappointing. I would like that in, a, in an eight ounce or six ounce. I think they have six ounce jars as well. So Dave Rowney, if you're ever listening to me, know that I love marine blue so much. I would buy a gallon of it. I feel like that's the color I constantly overstock when I or reorder supplies. You know, there's that one thing that when you go to the grocery store, you always buy because you never remember if you still have it and you never want to run out of it. My mom used to do that with butter. Or maybe better would go on sale and she'd buy it when it was on sale. I don't know. My husband does that with oats. God forbid we run out of oats because we have them almost, we have them every day for breakfast. So I just gets oats in bulk at Costco. And sometimes we have like, it feels like we have five pounds of oats at the house at any one given time. Okay, so the acrylic ink is just coming back in and it's, adding another layer, just darkening up the background a little bit and it will still act, it'll still be a resist over top of the, the inks, I mean the uh, oil pastels. Okay, so that's kind of what I like to do there. And if the if it's too light, I mean too dark on the inside to have any contrast, I could come back in and see if I can lighten it up a little bit by rubbing my wet brush over top of it. Sometimes I get lucky and it's actually over top of a oil pastel place, a little spot of oil pastel, and I can actually lift the ink right off of it. But that'll make that show up a little bit better. So there's my week of September 3rd through 9th, the cover of it at least. Let me get that dry and then I'll go to the inside and do some of the pages as well because I've got a little bit more time. Let's see if I have any other questions from anybody. Okay. 
Yeah, that's cute. Bar Barbara did see I was using my I was using my hitchhiker journal to take measurements. And then Barbara, I did not get measurements. I called, I called them again because those tables that we saw as we were walking out at the very end that were uh, printmakers tables, I cannot stop thinking about them. I even measured up here to see if I could get them in, but I can't even get them in the door. I'd have to like replace my doors to get the tables in. So I guess that's the answer. I can't have them. But I even got the go ahead to make an offer on them from my husband because he liked them too. But all right, I just ran it through that ink right there. So not a mistake. It's just another opportunity for more. Ooh, look at that. It's just an opportunity for more magic. So now I'll get it dry so it doesn't bleed or move around. Yeah, I love the size of this journal because um, when I go out, I ha literally have my phone and whatever I'm wearing. I'm not a purse carrier um, or bag or things like that. I, I have been in certain periods of my life, of course, when I had kids and you had to, but I am, I try to just not have lots of extra things to keep track of. So whatever. I love wearing overalls because I have so many pockets and I can take this with my phone. I grab my phone. I can take this with my phone and my cards are in there. I've got some cash usually sometimes. And then, you know, all I have to keep track of is that it fits in with my phone and that I can even put the, you know, loop a pen in there, but I'm in the process of making my own. Um, let me see if I have a sample of it up here. I started it. Nope, it's one of the things that got left downstairs, I think. So I'll show you guys later this week, but I am working on designing my own phone cover so that I can have it painted because I just can't stand the plain ones. It doesn't really feel like me. All right, let's see. I still wanna add some more to this. What else am I gonna do on these pages? Um, I could, What you do with them is entirely up to you. Ways that I would use these if I didn't use it for my daily six, which is kind of the, the way that I uh, attack my week. I try to one, two, three, four, five, six. I try to not make myself do more than six things or have six things on a list to do every day because it's just not attainable for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. And um, so if I can limit myself to six things, then this is Sunday, then um, anything above that, above and beyond that is bonus. And it doesn't happen seven days a week. I do take a day of rest. And that's usually Saturday for me. So, but I may have six things that I want to uh, be grateful for, right? Or six, six ways to rest. I can do a different list. So I'll still do numbers one through six on each one of these pages. And maybe I wanted to find th six things that I'm grateful for. Like I said that earlier, or, um, six positive thoughts, or I don't know, you guys think of, what would you do six of? One, two, three, five, six. 
and I can just freehand draw these two, but I had this stencil right at my hand and I do like these organic shaped dots. They're not super perfect. Sometimes I do this at the beginning of the week, but I feel like um, it's gonna make me get in there and actually get more of this done if I get the days of the week already on here. I get them all filled in more likely if I have this part done. Although I do enjoy this part, so. Capital ends are hard for me. I always feel like they're a little wonky.
So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. For now, I think we've gotten a good start in this. I've got my days marked out. I've got my lists ready. And there's a lot of extra space to work on during the week for more notes and measurements if I go look at more furniture. But thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. I'm gonna hop off just a little bit early because I started a little bit early. And um, excellent, let's see, choppy, but in focus, yep. Sorry, it is still choppy. We will work on getting that all um, fixed, hopefully. Actually, when I come home to California, it will not be an issue, but we'll figure it out. We will figure it out. If there is a way, we will figure it out. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to stop my share here and show you. Let's say goodbye. I'm going to show you my view right before I log off. Oh, I don't know if I can show you or not. Let's see. Turning you around so you can see. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Hopefully, you can. But that is the sun going down on my pasture. Hopefully someday we'll have some little goats in it. I'd love to raise goats. All right. Bye guys. Have a great weekend.